beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while this need. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. No mystery. Please look at me. Memory is an advantage that God gave man. It is because of the power of memory that you are able to remember. It is because of the power of memory that you are able to preserve knowledge. Are we together now? It will be impossible to advance in science and so on and so forth if you lack memory. Memory is a system of retention. Is God's intelligence given to man an ability to retain things because God is not only a giver he's a keeper but I know whom I have believed follow me tonight and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed so God has many systems of keeping things there is a system that keeps the prayers of the saints the Bible says the prayers of the saints arise like incense and they are collected in a vial and stored he's able to keep hallelujah and that one of the things that can be kept in heaven is the activities of the saints in the earth and that there is a book called the book of remembrance now the book of remembrance to a carnal man would suggest that God forgets the book of remembrance is not necessarily supposed to remind God as though he forgot no the book of remembrance is one of the ways that God administers justice in heaven please understand this in the judiciary some of you who are lawyers and are legal practitioners you have a very thorough knowledge of the Constitution however there is a manual a compendium of all of the policies that should govern the activities of men within a defined territory and when you are in the law court I pray that God will open your eyes tonight when you are in the law court you not only need your memory you need the books the books that archive and represent the basis of your advocacy the judge himself before he would pass a declaration, no matter how experienced, he will make reference to the books and consult with the things that are written there. Please listen very carefully. And as he consults with the things that are written there, he would be able to come up with certain verdicts. There are people who look guilty until the book bails them out. There are people who look innocent until the book proves otherwise. And then we see that there is a book of remembrance.
the activities of men in the earth the bible clearly lets us know that there is the all-seeing eye of god now if you studied fine arts you would have learned something called perspective is that true that means that a viewpoint you can stand from an angle and they will ask you to capture every information you can find paint it draw it let it be represented are we together now the same applies for technical drawing and anything that has to do with construction you are taught to be able to capture realities and images and information from different angles now so when i am here now i cannot clearly see overflow one i almost totally cannot see overflow three i cannot see our online people and so when we talk about the ability to see it's difficult for us to understand how god sees because we think that god uses his eyes to see the realm that god dwells in listen very carefully the realm itself is an eye the bible says listen carefully that god dwells in unapproachable light that he is full of light and in him there is no darkness no shadow of turning no variableness are we together now so that everything that surrounds god everything emanates light and so there is no possibility of darkness i hope you know that darkness also means the absence of information the absence of truth so that from the realm of god it is impossible for any activity to happen within a sphere that is under the jurisdiction of his creation that he cannot see are we together now the concept of sight we only know it based on what physics would teach us or medicine and and all of that but you have to look at sight as a product of light if the bible says there is no iota of darkness that means there is no absence of information there is absolutely nothing upon the face of the earth that the all-seeing eye of god the creator cannot see now this is very powerful because there are things that you would wish a man saw so that you would be able to advocate for you for instance the injustice that happens in our world are we together now people can be oppressed and use their earthly influence to manipulate injustice to become justice but the bible records that while all of that is happening in the earth the all-seeing eye of god is there a system of vindication that what men cannot vindicate you on there is still hope are we together now please follow me very carefully so we are discussing books here God sees all things God knows all things God is everywhere this is the unique attribute of God that he did not share with man it is what qualifies god to be in a class of himself god gave man any other thing gave him his image gave him dominion gave him the holy spirit but god did not give man omnipresence god did not give man omniscience god did not give man omnipotence these exclusive dimensions are reserved in god's class man does not know all things man cannot be everywhere are we together now this is very powerful so the bible records that every once in a while god would seem to show up in the earth and then begin to backdate certain things whether for good or for evil that there is a system by which god can go back in time and begin to deal with an issue that you may think has been long forgotten and that there is also a system where god can go back in time and begin to reward the saints for certain things now please understand what i'm telling you 
then the bible comes to the earth realm and begins to teach that men can forget are we together now scripture is scattered with this possibility that the best of us can forget your memory card can crash is that true your laptop can crash there's something in medicine called brain damage i don't know what it is but i i have an idea that whatever it is it represents a state where your brain for some reason may not coordinate at the frequency it was supposed to there are people who have gone into coma is that true and they came back and could not identify their wives their husbands is that true they didn't even know themselves they didn't know how to walk again how to talk again now i hope you know that if memory is not a possibility you will not be able to walk you will not anything you did now you will not remember again so that memory is an advantage you can archive yesterday and use the information for today i don't have to learn to walk again i learned it once it's been recorded it's been stored anytime i need to walk i use the mystery of remembrance are we together now listen very carefully i don't have to learn alphabets a to z again i did that many years ago but because of this power the ability of retention through memory and the ability to call the past into your present not everything in your past is bad i can call that knowledge and use it today is that true if i raise a song now that you used to sing when you were small it's amazing how effortless you will still sing it remember you did not rehearse but for the power of remembrance but as as flawless as men are they still forget they can forget i can give you a promise come show i can give you a promise meet me tomorrow and i'll give you one thousand naira and excite you you may remember but i may forget whether for health reasons demonic manipulation or just whatever it is and you come to me making a demand and i say no 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 i cannot remember and i rob you an opportunity to enjoy this blessing simply because i forgot there are people who are not employed today because their helpers forgot they forgot where they kept their cvs are we together now There are three stories in the Bible that are very interesting. They are testaments of the mystery of remembrance and how the saints can tap into this as one of the mysteries that cause them to command dominion. And very quickly, we're going to look at it. Remember, this is a prayer meeting. Story number one, Genesis chapter 41. I'll run through the story very quickly. The Bible tells us that Joseph... When you begin to read from chapter 39 then chapter 40 the bible lets us know that joseph now from potiphar's house on account of an accusation remember what relocated him was an accusation potiphar's wife lied that he raped her and then they relocated him to a dungeon a prison and left him there and then the bible says one morning that joseph watch this joseph noticed the countenance there were many other people in the prison but two were worthy of note the buckler and the wine presser the bible says they all used to serve the king and for whatsoever reason they annoyed him and he threw them into the dungeon and so they were there with joseph and then the bible records that joseph on seeing them he called for their attention and then they communicated dreams they had heard and joseph said tell me the dream and i'll help you let's see what can happen and then the butler brought his own dream and then the wine presser started first and the interpretation of his dream was in three days the king the pharaoh of egypt will call you out of the dungeon and you will be restored back to the palace where you will serve the butler was impressed at this news and said i also dreamt and he said okay tell me your own dream i was holding three baskets upon my head full of bread he said 
and suddenly the ravens came and ate of the bread and joseph said oh dear this is what it means in three days you will also go out of here but the only issue is that when you are out of here you will be hung and the birds will eat your flesh so he was done and then he quickly told the wine presser please when you go to pharaoh do not forget remember me tell pharaoh now that you are with me in the prison we don't lie in the prison there's no point lying you are already there prison is where they tell the truth a lie is told so you will not go there but once you are there you see that so at least we've been able to discuss as co-prisoners you know the truth now please go to pharaoh and use the opportunity you have and tell him that there is a man who is who has been unjustly accused and whose destiny has been unjustly tied i can imagine the one press i say no problem god bless you when i go back the first thing i will do is to tell i must make reference to the person who prophesied to me it's amazing how good things can make you forget where you came from and can make you forget that you need to help others too this is man for you are we together now i i can imagine them hugging themselves loving themselves blessing themselves and saying look i'm not sure you'll stay more than one week in this prison again now that i'm out by evening just imagine in the prison that we're discussing your issue and joseph will say thank you but the bible i love the bible the bible says that when he was reinstated it noted that the man forgot joseph joseph remained in the prison for two years because one man's memory went bad please understand the implication of this not because his skill went down not because god was no longer with him the memory of his helper could no longer capture the need to help him and the man was there full of grace full of gifts full of potentials full of prophecy full of dreams but at the mercy of one man's memory are we together now then the bible says when god was now ready to remember by himself genesis 41 let's start from there I've saved the long reading of chapter 39 and 40. Genesis 41. Let's start from verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of what? Two full years. Take note of that information. Two full years. That Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by a river. Verse 2. And behold, there came up out of this this and that and that jump to verse 9 let's save time verse 9 now remember let me just save us the stress he gathered everybody the sorcerers and everyone and said i have dreamed a dream that has troubled me the pharaoh speaking now and he attempted to get those who would interpret for him and they could not interpret and then the bible says verse 9 then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember i do remember my faults this day next verse pharaoh was wrought with his servants and put me in word in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker and we dream the dream in one night i and he and we dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream read on and there was with us a young man was he not supposed to say this earlier but because he could not remember two full years were added to a man's experience and now by the mercy of god look how effortless he's remembering everything that means the information was still in his memory something stopped it from coming to light follow me please it does not look like this man forgot the story 
so why could he not remember look how articulate he is in stating everything remember his brother was now two years old in the grave he had died and he still remembered everything he says there was this young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret three thirteen and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 hallelujah 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 the power of remembrance then only after remembrance then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily hastily that means speed was a possibility in his life but just because the memory of the benevolence what he did could not be remembered this man remained in the dungeon and he shaped himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh now when you begin to read the remaining parts after interpreting the dream at that moment joseph is reinstated and not only reinstated promoted to get to a point where he became the prime minister of egypt and pharaoh made a declaration that only in the throne would joseph be lower than him now remember that everything in scripture is a type of christ and the church are we together number two everything in scripture is prophecy the bible says the things that were written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are we together now yes so joseph is put on that throne and then they bring him an egyptian wife are we together now the daughter of potiphera the bible says the priest of own and she became his wife and they too became the rulers of egypt and under their leadership egypt began to thrive and excel even in the times of famine now notice everyone who came to buy grain to survive only did that because one man remembered look at the miracles that were associated with remembrance the reinstating of a man the fulfillment of a prophecy the saving of a nation and the then world from famine for seven years were at the mercy of one man's memory everybody say the book of remembrance if one man's memory can produce that kind of boomerang effect one man just remembering and the king fetches him from a dungeon and he becomes a representation of God's purposes within his day then it means there is something we need to know about the power of remembrance number two in Isaiah chapter 38 please give it to us verse 1 the Bible talks about a man called Hezekiah are we together now in those days verse 1 please look up hezekiah was sick unto death everybody say unto death that means that something was about to end in his life and the bible says isaiah the prophet the son of amos came unto him and said thus saith the lord now when god is speaking and and i hope you know that isaiah was not a fake prophet isaiah was a genuine prophet thus saith the lord set your house in order for thou shalt die and not live who is speaking god is speaking through a mouthpiece called isaiah and saying hezekiah i hate to be the bearer of bad news but you are not going to recover you will die and hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the lord let's see the contents of hezekiah's prayer ready and he said everybody remember now remember when i remember my wrong this day that's what the butler said remember now oh lord i beseech thee how i have walked before you go to the archives and check 
God of heaven, I know there is a verdict upon me now, but I place a demand on the mystery of remembrance. Remember that you are a just God. Righteousness and justice are the foundations. I'm, I've become a lawyer at the point of death. I need to plead a case and I'm using the remembrance. He says, I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in your sight. Is it not written that if they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity? Is that true? Now, Isaiah is bringing before God. He said, Lord, I know you are God, but something is wrong with this verdict. I know that you can remember there are archives, testaments of my uprightness before you. And I bring it before you. And I plead, although you are God, remember. Next verse. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah again. So the Bible is showing us how God remembers. Now watch this. He's praying. Remember the content of his prayer. Remember. The Bible is showing us how God remembers. That when God remembers a thing or a person, this is how he acts. Verse 4 again, please. Let's go back to verse 4 so that we understand what we are doing. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, next verse. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard your prayer of remembrance. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add to thy days 15 years. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And then you will read on, he used the sun as a sign to go back 15 degrees. So that he would know the certainty of the things that were spoken. Everybody say remembrance. If you knew Isaiah and Isaiah died, you say, oh dear. I mean Hezekiah. Hezekiah, you have gone. But Hezekiah refused to die. And Hezekiah used remembrance to insist that oh God remember I have walked uprightly before you and the Bible says God remembered he turned his situation around the last story is a prayer meeting Harush <laughs> Kalabrakosi Atakatosh story story once upon a time there was a king called Ahasuerus and that king the Bible records that he was Lord over 127 provinces then the Bible lets us know that he was married to a woman called Vashti and that the king would usually as they did in those days flaunt their glory including their wives are we together and it was time to bring Vashti to the scene and Vashti refused and I hope you know that what Vashti did was not really it was an offense but it was not that bad it was because she was in a position that she had the power to influence other women if the king Ahasuerus was not a king an ordinary man the suggestion would be counseling counsel them and say that's all right you are not the first just make sure you don't act like a stupid woman tomorrow but because she was in a position the king was such a nice man he didn't want to act but his advisors came and said no 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 these people are models that means not every offense carries the same gravity at every level you will do tomorrow what you did today and the consequence may be more are you seeing that now and then the bible says first is banished then the scene changes and the king calls for young virgins to come all within the province and then the bible says in shushan there was a little village girl called hadassah are we together yes the she was the niece of mordecai one who sat at the gate now please follow my story then the Bible says a time came when certain people were conniving to dethrone Ahasuerus and Mordecai heard that information and he took it to the king 
and told the king that this and that such and such is to happen and they apprehended the people and justice was administered then the bible says it was recorded and left are we together now yes so cut the long story short esther becomes queen but in that same palace the right hand man of the king who was a friend to Vashti, obviously. Are we together now? By the name Haman. The Bible says that this man was antagonistic to the purposes of God. He hated the Jews. I believe had they left Haman for long enough, one day he would have implicated Esther herself. Because his plan, the Bible says, was to annihilate the Jews. One by one. He would first focus on the ones outside the palace and then deal with the ones within the palace so her man was making life very difficult are we together now and then every other thing that happens is the hand of god and how he delivers people but now let's go very quickly to esther chapter 6. on that night look up please on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king i hope you know that the book of esther again is a type of our relationship with the christ esther being his bride the church mordecai being the holy spirit are we together now her man being satan the accuser of the brethren who once had access to the throne who was now banished are you getting the point now esther being queen king ahasuerus being the father now understand all of these stories the bible says that on that night could not the king sleep was it not in your bible that you should give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem are we together now so the bible says that they were read before the king next verse and it was found written that mordecai had told of bitana and teresh two of the king's chamberlains the keepers of the door who sought to lay hand on king ahasuerus verse 3 and the king said what honor and dignity have been done not will be done that means under normal circumstances this man should not be in this situation after communicating that level of benevolence what had been done to this man mordecai for this then said the king's servants that ministered unto him there is nothing done for him there is nothing done for him the company runs by your intelligence but there is nothing done for him the lives and the destiny saved through your love for god but nothing done for him next verse and the king said who is in the court now her man was coming to the king the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai look at this 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 wicked Luciferian type of attitude that means if the book of remembrance were not open for three more days Mordecai would have died remember it coincided with when you wanted to get the permission to finally finish him ah, it's good to be remembered on time is good to be remembered on time now here is a man i'm sure the man had discussed with his wife we will hang that man today but that same time quarter to shame may god arise for someone in the name of jesus christ just when the desire of the wicked seems to find expression by the intelligence of God and by the mystery of remembrance, may God raise help in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow my story. 
Haman was in the outward court of the king's house to speak to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The guy had dug the gallows. I'm sure in his mind he had imagined how Mordecai would die. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. God can remember. Next verse. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, her man standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Let's read on. Look up, please. So her man came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor? When God is ready to lift you. Now, notice, when he was talking to the chamberlains, he said, what shall be done to Mordecai? But when Haman now came, if he said, what should be done to Mordecai? He said, uh -uh. what will be done to the man whom the king honored? I hope you know this same mystery was used to conceal Jesus. When the Pharisees came and said, are you the Christ? Who are you? John said, I am the voice of one crying. That means I will not tell you I'm Elijah that will forerun the coming of the Lord. Are we together now? Jesus Christ, that concealing continued to happen until the father finally declared, this is my beloved son. So now Mordecai is hidden as the man who the king wants to honor. Now her man thought in his heart, watch this. To whom will the king delight to honor more than to myself? So his selfishness was about to propose a fantastic idea to his peril. He makes diviners mad that God can turn their reasoning backward so that they will not perform their enterprise. And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, comma, let the royal apparel be brought before the king before which the king used it to wear. That means her man had even been eyeing Hazarus himself. Are you seeing it now? Yeah. You are told to honor a man. And you say, king, you have many robes. There's one that you wear. Let it be done to that man. When you start wearing the king's clothes, you are shifting closer to the throne. My God, and the horse that the king rided upon does that sound like Satan to you? I will be like the most high, I will arise above the stars of God, the same spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. It says, And the crown royal which is set upon his head, verse 9. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of, of one of the king's most noble princes that they array the man without whom the king delighted to honor. Listen, and bring him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Full stop. What a wicked man. Because he thought about himself. And listen, that opportunity only allowed his lust and imagination. Everything he had imagined to happen, by all means, now he had the chance. And he said, King, this is what should be done to that man. Next verse. Hallelujah. Ah. Then the king said to her man, Make haste. And take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said, and do even so to Joshua Selman. There is a strong anointing on what I share with you. That seated at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken nothing next verse then 
took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him before the horseback through the street of the city and Haman was dragging Mordecai thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor next verse and Mordecai came again to the king's gate now notice this let me explain to you what this means look up after all that clamor when Mordecai was done he returned back to the gate and sat there will you climb the king's horse with his apparel and not go to the throne and sit down Mordecai said I will stay where I was lifted there was a place I stayed even though I am rising I will not forget that it was my service at the gate that caused remembrance to come can you wear the king's robe ride the king's horse and still remain where the king kept you the king had not promoted him the king gave an instruction I'm sure while Mordecai was on that horse he was saying don't be carried away you are not yet in the palace you will go there but you are not yet there and he came down imagine the entire crowd say Mordecai I'm sure you are the assistant now and he says watch me let me return back to the place from whence that grace found me I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lord you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your glorious majesty someone be Mordecai tonight hey Listen, this right here is how great men fall. When they are tested with power, when they are tested with lifting, when they are tested with the anointing, when God begins to lift you and sudden lifting come overnight, chances are that you will forget. Deuteronomy chapter 8, don't turn there. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when you have done all these things, you will say, my power and my might has gotten this. He said, but thou shall remember. Listen, it's not only God alone that has a book of remembrance. Men must have books of remembrance. When David stood before Goliath, he said, the God who delivered me, I remember what happened. The God who delivered me from the bear, delivered me from the lion today. He would deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Forget not. Forget not that he took you from nothing. Forget not that there were 10 of you in your family and you are the first to rise now. Forget not that it was, you, you started rising before you knew anything about favor. Forget not. Let's just stay here and let me teach you something very powerful, my brothers and my sisters. A man who can remember is a man 
who can be sustained. A man who can remember the faithfulness of God. Remember where you were yesterday. Remember the hand that lifted you. That is the man that will never go down. Pastors forget. Businessmen forget. Years ago, I remember I watched a Nigerian film of a village girl who was loved by a wealthy man. I don't know the name of the film. I don't even know who acted it. Are we together now? And he picked this village girl. I think she was selling something, granite or so, you know, the way they do Nigerian films. And he saw her and liked her and picked her. His parents insulted him. He said, kill me, I will marry this village girl. And then like 11 years or so down the line, she had become the wife of this man and there was another village girl who was a house help in that house. And this one's village girl ill-treated this woman. Ill-treated the young girl until one time, I think she got blind or paralyzed or something. And when she was paralyzed, it was the small girl that stayed with her in the hospital. And then a pastor came to pray for her for uh, uh, healing or something and then she began to remember that all of this and that and that then the long and short of the nigerian film is that she later discovered that that girl was her sister the little girl i think the, maybe the mother had the child somewhere also that was a sister that she was ill-treating let me tell you this the bliss of the palace made the butler to forget the bliss of greatness the applause of men you know most people sit down and say what is there in fame what? no 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 there is a reason why remembrance is necessary you want sustainable anointing you want sustainable impact please learn to remember you need to have a book of remembrance that is in the similitude of that which is on the throne. I remember that 10 years ago when I was nothing, this gentleman came. I remember when I was soaking Gary, for instance, you would say, I remember. So that you don't see him 10 years later and push him. No. There are mistakes you make when you are outside of the palace. It does not matter. If you make those mistakes in the palace, you will pay for it. First, she could make any mistake outside the palace and go scot free. But now, this mistake on the throne would cost her so much. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember. Many have forgotten their fathers, many have forgotten their mothers, many have forgotten those who played all kinds of roles in their lives. Many have forgotten the God that lifted them. Many have forgotten the hand that helped them. Please listen to what I'm telling you. God is speaking to someone here. That a man can rise so high that the scar of yesterday's pain can so erode from your life and your mind it will never look like you were there it will never look like you ever climbed a bike in your life it will it will never look like you soaked gary i know sometimes we are excellent people but sometimes we allow the deception of success to so swallow us that we lose the ability to forget i have learned as a personal principle that modesty is the closest way to remember when you live a life that is modest temperate the bible calls it that he that strives for mastery is temperate that means define boundaries it was a mistake solomon made he refused to be temperate by the time we get to ecclesiastes solomon was a man who was utterly lawless and careless see let me tell you this i believe in prosperity i believe in all the blessings of god but look at me believers there is only so much cloth you can wear there is only so much food you can eat are we together now this is all the stomach you have another one will not come from anywhere thank god for all the cars you will have you will not remove one leg and put it in one jeep and remove your head and put it in another car the way 
we approach success if not guided by these mysteries many people will fall by the wayside this is why you find out uh, respectfully speaking this is true for men of god is true for business people is true for politicians they begin to rise and when the whole world is watching suddenly they vanish out of thin air the mistake of haman and the wisdom of mordecai are two lessons we must learn Mordecai rides on a horse, the king's horse. That honor is an honor that I don't think even the queen had. And when Mordecai dropped, he said, thank you, Haman. He returned back to the king's gate. That's where they found him. Was it not on your knees the anointing found you? Have you returned back? <laughs> Was it not in the place of fasting and prayer that grace met you? Was it not in the place of dedication where you will roll like this, my dear brother that was rolling left and right? I'm sure for some of you that was so embarrassing. This guy is falling his hand. So a, a deceptive approach to life tells us. Listen, if you were lifted on your knees, remain on your knees. If you were lifted while singing his praise, remain singing his praise. It's very uncomfortable to remain on your knees when the world is watching you. It's embarrassing. You are not that naive. You should stand so you can shine. Apostle Joshua Selman, the man of God, anointed. But when you remember that if God forgets you, anything can happen to you when god forgets you anything can happen it's a lesson we're still going to move on but i need you to get this listen i have shared this for years and told people be careful i have warned many people in my life and said if if you don't pay attention with the way you are managing success you will fall by the wayside it was not prophecy some of them thought it was nonsense nonsense and today sadly speaking many of them have gone down as if it was not god that lifted them do you know the higher you rise the more slippery the path is a day can come when you will even be ashamed to roll before God. Why will I roll my designers on the ground? In the presence of kings and in the presence of nobles. This was the mistake that Saul's daughter made. That made her remain barren. When David, it was time to take the ark. David danced and danced and rejoiced like a fool. And the daughter of Saul said, King, you are no longer a shepherd. You are carrying a stupid bush mindset. You want to embarrass yourself. You are no longer, a, you are a king. Act like royalty. And he said, I'm dancing before God. Who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me? And the Bible says, God had that conversation. When God had that conversation, no matter what would have happened, she wouldn't have given birth. Because... An indignation rose I continue to tell God I say Lord I remain your boy huh? I am other people's father I am other people's mentor I am other people's role model thank God for that but I remain your boy you will always meet me where you found me Adam where are you I heard thy voice but I hid because I was naked he said Haman let's continue say it please Haman hasted to his house mourning crying and having his head covered next verse and Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him and said his wise men and Zeresh listen then said his wise men and zeresh his wife unto him if mordecai be the seed of the jews 
before whom thou hast begun to fall thou shall not prevail against him but shall surely fall before him that means this mistake you have made Mordecai is the seed of the Jews there are commandments that have been given the Jews to not forget if Mordecai is a true Jew and will remember those ordinances you are finished because the factors that should make him fall and give way will not happen again your doom is true look at this Mordecai once at the gate now I, I want to save us time because you read later on you find out that her man was hung at the gallows all kinds of things began to happen in his life culminated by Esther's declaring to the king that this man wanted to destroy her people and the king went to his garden to think like any wise leader would do to not be hasty in speech and then he came and knelt down and was begging her and when the king came it looked like he was trying to rape the wife and the king said not only have you annoyed me you are now trying to rape my wife go and hang this guy the gallows was there waiting for them and they hung him there and that was the end of it and then eventually Mordecai was honored to take the place of Haman in the palace and that ends the story of Esther listen carefully there are two women only in scripture whose names became the books of the Bible and their names were written there so that we will remember what they did the two names Ruth and Esther were put in the Bible the two women did the same thing notice that in all cases it had to do with men it had to do with marriage and it had to do with the power of submission the power of loyalty the power of not trivializing the things that God can do and the remembrance that follows Ruth remembered her mother-in-law and said I'm not leaving you your God will be my God your people will be my people and because she stayed and remembered how this woman was nice to her as a mother-in-law she led her and advised her to a field of a wealthy man called Boaz are we together now yes and Boaz saw her and loved her and took her I hope it is very interesting because for Esther she had never married but for Ruth she lost her husband and now an opportunity was coming again remembrance the book of remembrance that archives the works of the saints and that there is a reward system attached to it and that once you can invoke the mystery that will make God remember now take note he is not remembering because he's forgotten he's remembering because it is part of the ordinances of heaven for administering justice remembrance let me show you a scripture I found that really really changed my life and then I'll give you two keys and we'll pray never forget this scripture for the rest of your life Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14 please read with me everyone is projected if you can see Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14 one to read remember me oh my God concerning this stop 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 that means you can take any matter to God and provoke remembrance concerning this you can put your this there concerning my finances concerning my family situation concerning my joblessness concerning the tragedy happening you can go before God and say, remember me, oh my God, concerning this. And wipe not my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. When the Lord showed me this scripture, I remember crying like a baby. I said, this is powerful. Lord, do not wipe these good deeds. With all humility, you can go before God. Lord, I have served. 
Lord I am a faithful worker I stand before God it is true that I clean the seats Lord I stand before you that you can go concerning this this is how to petition the parliament of heaven remember concerning this and all that I have done do not wipe it out for the house of the Lord and for the offices thereof so God remembers and every time God remembers God acts please look at me my dad is such an amazing man quite a very very amazing man one thing I learned from my dad that I thank God for he's still alive I truly thank God for is that my dad was an extremely grateful man my dad paid attention I saw this growing up if you did something striking my dad would make a big deal out of it and will continue to raise a memorial over that act one time they were traveling to the village and it was in the night I don't know what took them there it was really late and the car broke down I think it was raining and there was they asked around and there was a mechanic now they were more than halfway the journey almost in the middle of nowhere and the mechanic was brought and he had to look at the car and the mechanic not only looked at the car I think I hope I'm right he followed them right to the village so that if anything happened he would be there do you know from that time until I left home every time my dad were traveling he would buy potato or buy something and stop at that house and say where is this man this was even it was it was more than 10 years down the line he was still doing it remembrance remembrance there are people today who are not supposed to be sitting with kings but are sitting because the kings remember their fathers remember their mothers you said you are the son of who that man let me tell you a little story in 1961 i was a young boy from the village with a torn trouser when your father gave me a cup of water the cup of water that was worth 10 naira is now what a great destiny because of remembrance when god remembers you you are lifted when men remember you you are lifted you need the book of remembrance to be open. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? You wait. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know? Let me tell you in my personal walk with God, there are things that God has done in my life, even to this day, He continues to do them. And most times when i go before him to say thank you he will remind me of a particular kingdom not necessarily a sacrifice he will tell me that this that happened do you know there are families before i finish my story there are families that will never go down do you know why because they didn't have all the money but they left a little room for missionaries they left a little space and every man of God will come you would think the people are in ministry their job is to cook and you would think those things will be forgotten but there is a book in the heavenlies where these things are recorded and you will see the child will come many years later sometimes the child may not even be serious with God but for that covenant of remembrance God will come and visit the children remembrance I once watched the documentary of Fiji Island the revival that happened in Fiji Island and it was said that the missionaries the early missionaries who got there that the people oppressed them and killed them or butchered them or did something very tragic and then they died the moment they died is a documentary I think you can find it somewhere the fish in the sea stopped producing fish the land stopped producing 
at its maximum it wasn't even producing the nation literally plunged to depression until some intercessors began to pray they began to pray and to pray and to pray and then the lord revealed to them that there is an indignation that is rising over that territory and that they needed to plead the blood it would take the blood of the eternal covenant to solve this problem and then they had time to pray repent on behalf of the nation and then in addition fortunately they found the grandchildren of the missionaries that they had killed the grandchildren and they invited them to fiji island and they performed a ceremony officially apologizing loving them and they prayed and blessed the land just like child's play within a short time i don't know what time frame exactly strangely they saw fish in the sea and a sea of fish that they had not seen the first crusade that we had as a ministry the first crusade it was in plateau state I remember one of the, the people who was guiding us, the tour guide, he took us to the graves of the missionaries and showed us the missionaries that were killed when they brought the gospel to that land and showed us the missionaries and showed us everything. And that from that time that they killed the people, all kinds of things had been happening in the land. And I remember standing there to pray and we said, Lord, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, the Bible says. He's slow to anger and rich in love. We stood there and said, we are also missionaries. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand by the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of any Abel there. And to speak and say in the name of Jesus that the land be released. I tell the truth and I lie not. We were somewhere standing and we were watching a hill. And all of a sudden, physical dark shadow. Like every boy, you could record it. We just began to see it slowly moving out of the land. It took almost 45 minutes. So it was not something you would rush like that. Just moving corporately out of the land. Where I schooled, secondary school, there used to be a tree. The tree, I'm not exaggerating. The tree was dried, but all the leaves were on it. They tied ropes around the tree and you would ask and they would tell you there was a story that the tree was cursed. There was a story that happened around there. Cursed as a memorial over the land. Why would God tell the nation of Israel, raise a memorial in this place and teach your children? That means they should not forget. If they ask you, why do you do this? Teach them that this is why we do this so that you will know. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Keep it, keep it. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart. Depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Then he says, they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh. As a man, I've had people in my life who I almost cannot reject helping and lifting because they, the, the power of remembrance, they will always remember and make reference and say, Apostle, thank you. You did so, so, so and so to me. You did so, so, so and so to my family. And they remind me of God. And I'm compelled every time, even when they don't ask me anything, it's like their remembrance of that is, is a debt that, that I must pay. I am moved to wanting to help them again. Many have forgotten. Like Haman. I want to employ the wisdom of Mordecai. That you never forget where he brought you from. Are we together? That there is remembrance now let me teach you before we pray very quickly two keys two keys that open the book of remembrance over a man there are two scriptures that will reveal these keys and then we'll pray blessed be the name of the lord galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 this is the first key that you will need to open the book of remembrance over yourself 
over your family, over your territory. Let's read together. One, two, go. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh-huh. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Watch this. The first key that opens the book of remembrance is consistency of your well-doing regardless of reward regardless of who sees you regardless of whatever commendation comes or does not come consistency weariness is something that can catch up with you when your value is not being appreciated when your impute is not being noticed are we together now we're humans and if you continue to strive to contribute in the life of a man a ministry an organization a system and it looks like you are not noticed and you are not rewarded the side effect is weariness and the bible says let us not be weary that means that your reward is tied to your consistency this country is full of stories of people who deserve to be rewarded politically spiritually are we together financially in business in ministry but for many years they had all kinds of hamans around their lives around their offices yet the people continue to be steadfast many of our loved ones have situations where they were qualified to be the ones sitting at certain positions but manipulations happen and yet they continued being consistent the bible says if you are consistent if you are steadfast if you are unbending in well-doing the bible gives you a guarantee that a season according to the law of times and seasons the law of time and chance because it happened to them all the bible says one day like the hand of a clock it must come to your turn and you must find expression this is true this is true I met a precious lady yesterday one one dear lady I used to know her that should be 2004 2005 in the campus here she used to sing in one of the fellowships wonderful lady she would sing her heart out dance and celebrate God everyone wanted to attend the fellowship just because I mean the lady would lead worship with all she was always smiling always happy and then I had the opportunity to see her yesterday and I saw her she was happy now a mother of many children and I looked at her and then she brought me her album and said apostle I remember those days and I said oh dear who told you God does not remember who told you God forgets the sacrifices of the saints there are things you are doing today you are already securing tomorrow with it a day will come you will watch the video of this level of koinonia and tears will come out of your eyes you say that was me cleaning the chairs that was me playing the keyboard and someone stands to say you are not supposed to be where you are and god says it's too late your consistency imagine if mordecai got tired and said look i'm tired of bailing the king out and then her man would be receiving the glory mordecai was consistent even when he rode upon the king's back he returned to stay where he was found everybody say consistency listen this is an encouragement to someone right now the worship team got it powerfully what's that song again you are not turning back where's Tosin? not turning back and not going just sing that part for me i'm gonna wait on you jesus I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. Yeah, that's the song. I'm gonna I'm wait. I'm back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. One more time. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 
And I'm not turning back now 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 Listen, let me teach you something Impatience will always give birth to what will fight your promise you must sustain the stamina to stay let god meet you where he last instructed you lord i will continue Kai. another woman who showed us the power of waiting was anna the prophetess the bible says for about 60 years from the time she lost her husband listen carefully for about 60 years she was in the temple do you know what it means to pray without results for 60 years abraham did it for 25 years hey my soul wait thou upon the lord there is power in waiting there is power in staying there is power in remaining i keep sowing i don't see the heavens open but i will continue sowing I keep speaking. I may not see the result, but I will never stop speaking. I will keep serving. I may not see the result, but I will keep serving. I will hold on to the word. Men may mock me. They may call you stupid. You are wasting your time. Where is the consolation? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream, and our mouths were filled with laughter. And they testified among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for us. It says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. The Bible says they that sow in tears. Listen Koinonia. It is possible to sow in tears. And the Bible says in due season. John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Hear me listen to me you must conquer the pressure that men will bring to you they will push you into seasons that are not yet God's design they will push you into things that are not yet God's design Mordecai can you remain in the palace can you stay at the gates Mordecai looked at Haman and knew that Haman was occupying his position but the battle is the Lord's. He remained at the gate. If Haman tried to fight Mordecai, Mordecai would kill him because Mordecai, Haman was the king's friend. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? It will not always look like this. Let me speak to you. It will not always be that you will go home every night and wonder, what do I eat? No, no. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Man of God, it will not always be that you go to a meeting and the power of God will not be there. No, you, you are in a season. Stay, stay, I'm prophesying to you. You are in a season. Build stamina and stay. A day will come when the glory of God will mantle you. Stay while you learn. Jesus, you are Savior, not at its twelve. You are Savior, not at age 18. Jesus, you are Savior, not at 30. You are only Savior at 33. The 18-year-old Jesus would not save the world. Joseph, you are a deliverer, but not in the pit. Please listen to what I teach you tonight. These are secrets of the kingdom. My soul wait. So the first key that causes the book of remembrance to be open. The book of remembrance in heaven and the book of remembrance before men is consistency. Keep praying. You look like a fool but keep praying. Bros, you are still here. Five years you are not making progress. Your colleagues have started ministry. Stay there stay there stay there stay there while you pray listen let me tell you one of the most powerful virtues of the spirit is self-control 
many of the gifts of the spirit are tied to it why should i keep quiet when i can prophesy why should i not talk when i can preach there are people in this ministry that i love so much scattered in and around they are mighty men in the spirit in ministry some of them are mighty business people in this ministry multi-millionaires you will never see any pressure to be known any pressure to be seen they come and sit down they serve god they worship god yet they are mighty prophets they are mighty apostles let me tell you something when you see a man that has self-control respect such a man it is powerful to have what to say and keep quiet it is powerful to know what to do and still remain it is powerful to see a door that is open and yet not move if the door is closed it's not a proof of your stamina the door is closed but can you stand before an open door and yet not move hallelujah this is very powerful I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people in my life and sometimes when people want to tell me who and who I'm going to meet they'll say ah, apostle this man is a great man or maybe he's an influential man politically or is a great man financially or spiritually and apostle ah, these people have this and that and I stand before the Lord God of heaven and I lie not I have never been under pressure to tell anybody sorry sir can you help me and buy a recharge card uh, I, there is a ministry called koinonia if the ministry is blessing you can you send 10 naira no no consistency god is ministering to someone now because you see let me tell you this there are many of you that coming to koinonia is even an embarrassment to you because by the time you come they look at you and say for five years no car no nothing the only thing you do is to pray like a fool the only thing you do is to loiter around and sometimes you can feel stupid for being consistent i give you a scripture you are already opening a door stay there till the door opens you see the thing about god is that five minutes to your lifting it will still not be like it five minutes to your rising joseph you are still in the prison while the person has left the palace and is coming to you already you are not seeing him oh israel when god is already winning the battle you don't have to fight but you are not seeing just believe in what jehoshaphat is saying hallelujah consistency i will pray as before i will fast as before i will worship as before listen never be ashamed of your today you will miss it tomorrow receive the grace and the stamina to stay let people laugh at you let people mock you especially for our dear ladies because society has all kinds of pressures on ladies show us your husband is he a rich man show us this show us that have you traveled to um um, um asia america london uk and you stand there feeling stupid for loving the lord let us not be weary in well-doing there are preachers that need to stay lord what should i do now should i start a church or should i stay and god says just keep doing what you are doing in due season we shall reap can i tell you this the season of reward for a man's life is a fearful dimension of that man's life for reasons you cannot tell and explain you will see that god will command the territory to begin to sing your songs and to speak your purposes david was going to be king but for a very long time he was in the wilderness he killed a lion but remained in the wilderness he killed a bear if that news got to saul they would have called him to serve in the palace but he would never be king sometimes don't be quick to announce your achievements let god and time reveal it just come kill the bear but remain quiet in the wilderness this itch to talk sometimes is proof of weakness you sabotage where you are going did the bible not already tell you that you cannot light a lamp and hide it under a bushel waiting is very hard is proof of spiritual maturity 
to wait until seasons come hallelujah I've shared with you my story for many years in this ministry God would not allow me buy a car even when koinonia was on crowds of people here I would climb a bike and come for koinonia you would think I were a stupid person it was not lack of finances just like that Lord why do you want to humiliate me I love you so much why won't you leave me to buy a car then people started bringing cars to give me and God would tell me to just bless them and let them go if I were your relative would you clap for me for that kind of brain you would just be careful what you call common sense it has destroyed many people the way of the spirit is very strange I will never forget one time a man came to sit in front of me and said this is what God gave him he was going to bring me car keys and he carried the keys of the car and I was already smiling when he came again mm -mm. he said this man has not discussed with his wife his wife would join the people who would talk about you and say you have manipulated the husband I appreciated the man prayed for him with all my heart and told him to carry the car and go you see that Will I ever have a need of a car today? No. Never, ever, forever. Listen, waiting pays. When God wants to pay you, He will backdate it. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Fill it till it runs over. sustain the stamina to wait shut your mouth and your ears against the things that people say and all the rubbish and the nonsense that you will hear people say you are on your way to a dimension of grace he's training you he's teaching you listen you can stay with god you are lifting people out of the wheelchair and god will tell you not to honor one invitation sit down lord as what be a brother in welfare not even prayer band not even any place lord at least let me go to prayer department he says welfare is where i need you but lord are you aware i'm a prophet and you, i will be a prophet to the nations he will say cook let me teach you how to feed men and you are there turning food and somebody says do you ever have the ambition of being a chef and you almost want to want to slap the person and say are you do i look like a chef and God says, turn it. I teach you how to overturn. And you carry that cooler on your head. And you are marching. And somebody says, ah, emoji. Was it not you that was in our house yesterday? He said, this. You mean, I thought you were a pastor. He said, no, I work in the welfare department. What kind of church is this? Is it that they don't see men of God in this church? And you feel stupid. You drop that cooler and say, no. God, this this lady, I she 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 saw me prophesy. God says, carry that cooler. Because it is while you are carrying that cooler, you are qualifying yourself. A day will come, you will be able to carry any luggage and not be ashamed because you learned how to carry something embarrassing. Hallelujah. I always tell people jokingly I didn't start ministry preaching let me tell you you've heard my story I started ministry playing keyboard for a reverend who were part of the, the it was a prison ministry they were part of the people who preached later on to General Obasanjo when he was in prison they used to allow the mission agencies to go and preach they preached to him I used to play keyboard for them I had my local church and then later on he started a church when he started a church it was quite a distance from where i would live i would carry my own keyboard by myself this was 93 94 i would carry keyboard by myself and trek to the international hotel where he was using and drop it there i would play that keyboard they will finish share the grace i will carry it and trek back with joy the only thing I ever got throughout my time of serving in that ministry was one cassette and one bottle of Fanta when they were dedicating his album. 
I would have been offended and I would have been angry and say you don't know who I am the proof of sonship is servanthood if you can serve you are a son indeed let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus though he is God he considered it not robbery he came and humbled himself died even the death on the cross wherefore on the strength of that do you know that Jesus was almost giving up at Gethsemane as a man if it's possible let this cup pass over me I said nevertheless not my will but yours be done so this is the first key someone say I will continue better is the end of a thing the Bible says than the beginning thereof it is not enough to start you must trust God for grace and listen my brothers and my sisters I admit to you that it is painful your humanity will catch up with you while you wait yes as a gentleman they will look at you and say I used to know you in 2000 you mean you are still here how much is this shoe you are buying which church did you say you are serving say now I've been promoted I'm a deacon he said deacon deacon indeed your useless life looking like your yesterday you have not changed and you stand there feeling stupid for serving God and God says continue I almost gave up Sam and like I just couldn't take life anymore this is an encouragement for someone my problems held me bound depression weighed me down but God kept me so I wouldn't let go God's mercy kept me so I won't let go God can keep he can give strength to the faint whatever you have to do keep moving even if you cry cry but keep moving even if you feel discouraged keep moving insist that I will never stop if God has not stopped on me then I will not stop on myself I know he's called me to be a worshiper to the nations my first song they forgot it in two days you may be saying some of you put your songs online after three months only two people liked it no problem just continue some of you put your sermons online and you had only four comments and all of them were criticizing you go back to Bible school someone wrote nonsense another person said look false prophet and he just said I will never go online again I will never preach this thing again no Reinhard Bonke said the first time he used to escort a man for crusade and that day the man told him God said he would not come back again Reinhard Bonke would be the person to preach and Reinhard Bonke said he was shaking he was saying Lord is this how you have chosen to embarrass me and he stood and began to preach and he began to minister to the sick and people started shouting blind eyes I can see deaf ears I can hear people were rising out of wheelchair please continue receive the grace to continue receive the grace to keep praying receive the grace to keep speaking hallelujah someone can come to your family and say Kai this is your family you will never change you people are just like this keep declaring with my eyes will I see the salvation of the Lord surely there is an end my tomorrow is better than my today I will one day be called Beulah and Hephzibah I am the planting of the Lord a well watered garden thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place the Lord is my light and salvation of whom shall I be afraid he won't stop he won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop 
till I look just like him. I won't stop, I won't stop till I look just like him. I won't stop, I won't stop till I look just like him. Please sit down. Key number two, and then we'll pray. The first key that can cause remembrance towards you before God and before men is to not be weary in well-doing continue rewarded or not continue commended or not continue understood or not continue number two Isaiah 43 verse 26 thank you Jesus Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Want to read Koinonia? Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. God is speaking. Put me. Lift up a cry from the earth to heaven and say, Lord, remember. Put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance are you ready for one powerful scripture you should add to your library if there are five scriptures in your library let this be there ah i found this scripture day before yesterday i was meditating it fired like an arrow from my head to my feet i blasted in tongues i said that's right you see the bible said the kingdom of god is like a man who lost his treasure and you find candle and broom you sweep it when you find that you rejoice numbers chapter 10 verse 9 numbers 10 verse 9 look up koinonia and read it with faith in your heart ready one to read and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you then shall ye blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God. And ye shall be saved from your enemy. I now know what they did in before Jericho. That when you stand and your enemies overwhelm you. Lift up the trumpet. Is the power of praise. Oh, shall he scabber with us? Lift up that trumpet. The word is yada. Praise. Lifted with understanding. That when you see that you are encompassed by enemies and there is no way for victory. When you pray, in addition to that prayer, put God in remembrance. Then don't disturb him again. Lift up your trumpet and begin to blast it like the priest that you are. Go round your Jericho while you blast the trumpet. Go round your Jericho while you blast the trumpet. And the Bible says that sound, that shofar will come before God as a memorial. This is scripture. See, let God be true and let every man be a liar. Hallelujah. Please take it higher for me. Look at this scripture. It says, You shall be remembered before the Lord when you lift up your trumpet. I just saw a trumpet. This is what I saw in the spirit like a sound, a shofar. Hey, hey, hey. My 
sonhinha Agareca na tigna Na sonhinha Agareca na dogara Na sonhinha Agareca na dogara I will never go Agareca na dogara Oh, one more time, sir. I will never go. I love our roots. I will never go. And I will never go. Let the people praise him. He says, Then shall the earth yield for her increase. So the earth can yield. When you stand before a barren land, it says, put me in remembrance. Then when you are done praying, all Paul and Silas, after you pray, sing. And let the mighty one that sits upon the throne come and rent the heavens. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it to it like the ark of Noah, and they are saved. Agarei Canada Okara. So yina. Agarei Kanachina. Listen, the Bible says, though the olive may not produce, they may not be fixed on the vine. He said, yet, yet I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. My Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It says, though weeping and joys for a night, Koinonia, hear me, joy comes with the morning. Listen, there is one thing I know about God that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has in store for them that love him. But the Bible says he has revealed them that when I praise him, when I lift up a cry and say, Lord, remember me concerning these when i'm done saying it i begin to sing and dance like a madman and sing my way to another level and dance my way to another dimension it does not make sense he said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea hallelujah please hear me Do not trivialize what you have heard. Do not trivialize this deep mystery. Your destiny helper has a book of remembrance. Men have books of remembrance. Listen, there are things you have done for the kingdom. Some of you have served God. Some of you have prayed. Some of you have helped men. Some of you, your parents lifted people and everybody has forgotten about you. Let me tell you what to do when there are men in your life who can help you and they forget about you. Don't go knocking their offices. You are, you are doing it the wrong way. Go to the God of all flesh, the Father of spirits. Raise a cry before him. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I bring before you this petition. I am a member of welfare department. I am a member of prayer band. I'm a member of worship team. Let God be true. He says to lift up that incense and then begin to sing. Can you open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues? Pray in the spirit. A 
Roja da Baratu Casibelekish, Eka Barutas Cabarata Shella Posca. Why not you pray? Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please look at me. Esther chapter 6 verse 1. Please media help us quickly. Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. And on that night could not the king sleep. The same way Nebuchadnezzar or Zedarius could not sleep because the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, was in the lion's den. Listen, I'd like you to pray in tongues for the next one minute. And listen, this should be your focus when you pray. Father, wake everyone sleeping who should be awake to remember me. Lift your voice and pray in the spirit. On that night, then could not be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one, the king had to wake up. Number two, he commanded to bring the book of remembrance. You are about to pray. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I stand by the blood. And in the name of Jesus. And I declare tonight. Let the book of remembrance in heaven and on earth concerning me, concerning my reward, let it be open now. Lift your voice and pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please look up. 
Look up. Listen. The first time the Spirit of the Lord opened the book of Esther to me. The book of Esther as a book containing a mystery of favor was opened to me. It was a February of that year. The entire month I prayed favor. I prayed favor into my life. I believed it with all my heart because I found it there that books can be opened. Hallelujah. Now, listen. But favor is real. Please hear me. Don't sit down and waste your time and hate God for nothing. Favor is very, very real. Hallelujah. All blessings come from God through men to you. From God through men to you. When the book is opened in heaven, the spirit opens the book. And the bride also opens the book on earth. It is the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come. Listen, it is not difficult when the book is opened. Ahasuerus said, what should be done to a man who the king chooses to honor is a choice. It's a choice. God can choose to honor you. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. There is nothing that can be done when God's jealousy has been invested upon you. Listen to me. Believers, in Christ we are people who are beloved. Do you know what it means to be loved? That means God has made himself vulnerable to you. Beloved. I have loved thee with an everlasting love, he said. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. But that the book of remembrance be opened. I have seen these books opened. Even for me. I've sat down quietly and suddenly God brings to my mind the names of people. Not word of knowledge. Not word of knowledge. God does not just tell me their names. God connects something they had done to my life. And I suddenly become indebted to them. I just remember. A woman had done something for me years ago. Very trivial thing. I think it was towards the end of last year. It just became a burden in my heart for no reason. Clear the school fees of the children. Help them with whatever you can do. It was a burden. The woman never, she was not even in contact with me. I didn't even have her details. And I had to look for someone. I said, please, can you help me access so, so, so and so? Say yes. I said, please, let me have her details. And suddenly, I looked at it. And I said, okay, no problem. Madam, can I help you? This is what the Lord is putting in my heart. The woman said, this is an answered prayer. I've been crying. I'm a widow. I'm a widow. See, let me tell you. Don't go around harassing people to help you. That's not the way it works. Everything works in the realm of the spirit. Stay and pray and declare and declare and sing and declare that the heavens open up its book. That the seven seals be broken. That it be opened. Weep not for the book is opened. When the book is opened, that remembrance. Suddenly someone will call you and say, ah, I forgot you. Remember what happened to the butler? I remember my wrong this day. Have you not blessed people in your life? Did you not win souls in your life? Have you not served the purposes of the kingdom? Hear me believers. Don't be ashamed of your service. It is a memorial that can rise before God. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. And Hezekiah cried and said, Remember, O God, do not forget. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Lord, you have said, if I obey and I serve you, I will spend my years in prosperity, my days in joy. You have said it. And I serve you with all my heart. Let the blessings that follow service follow me. It's a petition. You are placing a demand like Mordecai. 
the bible does not record it but i believe that whilst mordecai sat at the gate he continued to speak and call upon the god of the hebrews avenge me my adversary her man is in the palace causing mayhem to me and to the people of the lord arise in your mercy listen there are things that can happen between you and god on account of your service that when the enemy raises an assault against your family against your life you can stand up with a counter petition lord remember remember when god is jealous towards you it has happened it has happened i'm telling you what i do myself and i'm sharing with you these secrets koinonia let me tell you this is october but if you believe the things i'm saying and the books are open you will be surprised at the unending you will come and testify here that someone who forgot you remembered you and said sorry is your father still alive is your ah. when joseph met with um benjamin and all the other brothers he asked them a question he said is your father still alive is everything well with you is this well with you fetch them and bring them to egypt they brought them they settled at goshen and they were prosperous until joseph died and joseph said when you go out of egypt carry my bones carry this principle carry this pattern with you don't lose it this is the structure it's an ordinance carry it together hallelujah there are things that God has done for others for the sake of others. There are things that God does for the saints for the sake of Jesus. There are things that can happen to Mephibosheth because he's connected to the house of Saul. Please hear me believers, we're rounding up. I truly want your life to experience the reality of God's grace I want you to touch these mysteries to experience them in a way and a manner that makes you exceptionally fruitful remember the Lord told us at the beginning of this year that I will make you exceeding fruitful he said it he said it and I believed him it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and now I show you the mystery of remembrance that a book can be opened you can call upon the God of heaven and say, Lord, remember, remember, remember. My father was a missionary. You can tell God he's gone to be with the Lord. But remember, he served you even at the point of death. Lord, this is not how you reward them that serve you. Suddenly the book is open. And God says, let me come and invest my favor upon this family for the sake of the sacrifice. It is not always about what you have done personally. You can take advantage of every good thing philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in christ you can take advantage of every good thing lord i'm in the worship team come i sing i sing I stand before your people and I sing. Lord, when apostle is preaching, I'm also standing. Sometimes I am tired, but I'm standing. Remember, oh God, your service. And the heavens open towards you. And God comes to you. Son, what should I do? And you say, oh God, bless me. Give me wisdom, give me favor. And he opens up your heavens. Do not waste your yesterday many of you made good use of it use it as a memorial let it rise to heaven speak to him concerning every matter don't forget what i taught you don't forget the scripture that i taught you that you stand before god and say remember concerning this issue remember you can confront him concerning any issue bring your strong reason lord let the plague of death end in this family why should the plague of death end lord even if everybody served idols i stand as a bridge i stand as a priest 
I have called upon the name of the Lord. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore Seth. And men began to call upon the name of the Lord. I stand as a bridge in my family. Hallelujah. Let me give you one prayer point. Last prayer point, And then we are done. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, every good thing that should come into my life as declared by your word, as declared by scripture, I declare that on account of this remembrance, I receive it by faith. Let it come. Please lift your voice and pray. I receive it by faith. Every good thing. Every good thing. Every good thing. He that did not spare his son, but offered his son, showed all things, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When someone loses 10 million naira and comes to you and says, I'm about to die. I don't know whether I'm alive or not. But the last time they told me I was dying, help me. At that point, that's not the time to start teaching him and say, okay, be patient. This is, you can teach him financial principles, but he needs that raven that fed Elijah to come to him quick. Let the raven feed him first. When someone tells you my life is not moving forward, all doors are closed. And because of that, my father is about to leave my mother. They have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of May. That's not the time to settle down and start saying, oh, this and that, line upon line. They are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart. Oh, how we need the power of God in this generation. We need the power of God more than falling down. We need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, it is his divine power that is the giver. And if that power is not resident within you, to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions, then you will continue to see people frustrated. If you're a man of God and you came here, listen to me. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. Let me repeat myself. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. You may be a good person. You may be a sincere person. It takes more than sincerity to be a blessing. The Messianic prophecy, Isaiah chapter 61. Please give it to us. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and then he says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord hath anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty. It doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty. It takes the anointing. You can have the mouth and say be free. But it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing to open up prison doors. Next verse. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the year of vengeance of our God. Look up please. It takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. 
to appoint to them that mourn in Zion. So even in Zion, there are those who mourn. It didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion. They are in Zion, yet they are mourning. To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. 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 For ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed. When a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month. Ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes. And God says keep your ashes here. Take beauty. As you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the street like an armed robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria. But we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. When you sit down and try everything and it does not work, you just tell yourself, I'm better off dead. And you at least, my money cannot rent a house, but it can buy a rope. What can it buy? A rope. And the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope. And you find a tree and hang yourself. And you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died. And then people come to church with that kind of pain. And a man of God says, don't worry. It's not all about your needs. It's about Jesus. I agree. It's about Jesus. But man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely. There has to be an opportunity given. When the spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people. I will never, never watch people go through things that the power of God can change. And act as if nothing can be done about it. No sir. Whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families. Whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered. I know you have prayed. I know you have fasted. But I've told you why it did not happen. It takes a level of grace. Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen, a place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. 
This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. To, to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny it says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end I believe that problems can end did you hear what I said I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God I believe it I believe it I believe prosperity is real I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I believe God can restore time. When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, 
God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire? You will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, li to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We are talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with. And you turn back and on Sunday, you climb your pulpit as usual. And suddenly, fire. A new dimension of grace. Do you believe in what I'm sharing? If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. Let me tell you, you can hold on to the hands of God. 
and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight i need your hands too in addition to your heart step in over my life step in please don't give up on god wake up don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night, no matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone roll away the stone prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone two things men did they rolled away the stone and they lose the man what if they lose lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed your destiny must open up tonight It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things. To prove your calling and election. To make it sure. There are things that must be in your life. To validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace. For God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture. And speak and close it and say let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute. And cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business upon my church
Alléluia. Alléluia. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tear. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, O God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. look up I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place because you see let me tell you every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season and if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be 
a miracle service that we just play around casually please believe for something to come upon your life believe for a grace to come on your life see this thing about anoint if it's not there it's not there period very simple hallelujah praise the lord i want to pray i'll stand tonight praying on the grace for speed hold on hold on please listen there is a reason why i continue to say this many destinies are too slow to glorify god are we together now when the devil cannot keep you at a standstill then your progress will be so slow it is said i must walk the walks of him while it is day that means i need to gain time it says for the night cometh when no man will walk again let me tell you my brothers and sisters there is a real grace for speed if you have not seen it is because it's not on your life there is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses ministries and so on and so forth Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I declare right now at the count of three, let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season, let it rest on people now. I release that grace. Take that grace now. Please bring them out. Take that grace now, inside, outside, everywhere. I activate the operation of this grace. I shift your life in the name of Jesus to strange dimensions in the spirit. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for Habakatalika Parusia. Receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel. I command speed, 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 speed. Bring them out. Speed. Help that woman, please. My God. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus. It says, ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what? I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. New level speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. 
never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families any family stagnated here i stand by the power of the holy ghost and i prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now now the lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the lord is saying the lord is bringing deliverance now i'm seeing chains if you are under this category as i'm praying now the fire of god i'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare, be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I mean, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Bye. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night, but except God is not God, you must be free. Right now, in the name that is above all names, I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound, but in the name of Jesus, everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Ela baraka toshe pekeretos. Heli abratos ke pekeretos. Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman 
and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church. And I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear. I don't know what family and what person came here crying. But the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let an anointing come upon your life now. That terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say My friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God as he has anointed as i pass your role if there is anything that is not of god it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we'll begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as i pass the lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you jesus that everything that is not of god must give way in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this row just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this row Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Sh 
Shala Baruka Tabarikete. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone. It is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of Jesus I declare and declare be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything that help be free now be free now be free now be 
free now. I'm seeing a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me, Overflow two. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Every reproach. Go now. Go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please. Let your heart be open. Please. Except God is not God. Whatever it is that has held you. As I pass by the spirit. The power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father in the name of Jesus. Honor your word. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus. Right now be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but 
I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside the Lord is showing me a family here there is a plague of sickness everybody from father to the last child there is nobody who is fine right now as I'm speaking the power of God is coming upon that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ overflow three I'm seeing the number 21 this is the healing anointing coming on 21 people right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands this is not a healing miracle this is the anointing to heal right now from the front to the back upon gentlemen and upon ladies receive that grace receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now please everyone overflow one two three main auditorium please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life lift your voice and pray Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, 
when when we do these things we are not wasting time at all you need to see what the lord um did in some of those overflows there are people who have real issues and sometimes madam please lift your hands i'd like you to shout jesus as loud as you can let the name of the lord be praised the spirit of prayer when i was in overflow three i saw that grace would do an impartation but it's in this season there is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of christ especially in zaria there is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer in the name of jesus take that grace now there is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life flames upon your prayer life flames upon your prayer life i declare capacity in your spirit man capacity i swing open the door for utterance in prayer grace to pray in the name of jesus christ someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not, the grace to pray, take it now. 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 The grace to travail. Not give me tea and bread. Not give me tea and bread. To pray destiny altering prayers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write while we are doing that please um i will minister to those overflow one okay the main auditorium and overflow two please listen main auditorium and overflow two um when i ask you to come you will come and stand in front here you'll be ministered to right here overflow one you will stand in front of your projector stand that away from the canopy to allow for space now um will i call it overflow 2b now the overflow that extends to second equa 
Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for, we believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk, you are not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have while you are coming out please ushers pr join them or any other department um, to collect the the prayer request those online you can connect by faith if you're trusting god for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here praise the lord i believe in miracles if you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers, or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets, and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please, quickly, you come, stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um those in the main auditorium here i hope i'm doing the right thing and then overflow two b and two c let me call it now two b extending to second equa and two c extending to the gate of the third overflow all of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very very fast very very fast so that we can finish while you are doing that please please let me advise especially for those outside as you are walking out make sure your phones your bags and any of your belonging is safe and then help those under the anointing god is delivering people setting people free and let's just let him be god praise the lord hallelujah accept the people ministering to you ask you questions don't worry just a touch and then you be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray let incurable situations live and I pray God that you give your people testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ in Nigeria,
taking away the pain. You make my life so beautiful. My beautiful, you are taking away the shame, taking away the pain, and you make me just like you. My beautiful, my beautiful, hey, you're taking away the shame, taking away the pain. These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from there. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From Benue, from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus, look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. This fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when i held your leg i felt the power of god moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too i want to pray for you you see god is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we are not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I would, I would see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, 
the son of the living God from today let the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are a footballer but you play by the anointing my friend it takes more than just kicking a ball I release the grace to excel and for you I release the grace to excel right now two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you in Jesus name God bless you thank you so much for your patience we're about to pray on the requests I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I truly believe that as we pray on these requests that every situation that has defied God it must answer to the name of the Lord let her go now I curse you by the God of heaven out now who else praise the Lord Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that god gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please i want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to i want you to believe because this is representing you before god i want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while. You are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i'm seeing fire burn on this thing i wanted to go down on my knees but i just saw fire burning and the lord said i should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it um there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray in the name of Jesus. Believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every request laid before god here i decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of jesus christ hear me the bible says these egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore i declare that everything that defied the name of the lord represented here i declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles 
let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure i, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it they are just different versions of expressing your need for favor i want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of jesus christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of jesus There are requests written here. It is mercy that will answer it. The Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be delivered. I declare mercy upon this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I stand representing the desires, the pain of your people. You have done it again and again, and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the Word of God I've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week I thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself that's why I didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now, I don't know what kind of carelessness happened, whether his friends or whatever. This gentleman just misplaced 
the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing god cannot do i'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything. He frowned his way to his father who said, you are a foolish son, I'm not surprised. And he came, I don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers, returns back to the board and checks and there is his name admission this see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you had liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of Jesus I connect you to them I connect you to them I connect you to them by the power of the Holy Spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise Joseph you will remain in the prison I pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may God compel them to speak about you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone trusting God for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of Jesus I declare that between now and August by the grace and the name of the Lord return with a miracle job
Hallelujah. I pray for those in ministry. The fire that must come on a man. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. I decree and declare, may that fire come upon your life. Every dying business in this place, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you, come back to life now. And to live, to deliver those appointed to death. There are people appointed to death. I heard a man of God give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight. He missed a flight and the plane crashed. And everybody was happy he missed the flight. They didn't know he followed a train that crashed. Are we together? You miss a flight and you are saying, Lord, I give you praise. You enter a train and you die. These are people appointed to death. In the name of Jesus. Death is a spirit. It has a voice it can hear. I forbid the earth from receiving your body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every family under financial captivity. Every family here. And every individual sincerely trusting God to come through for you financially. I pray for you. May the month of June be your month. Please believe me. May the month of June be your month. Let the hand of God, let the grace of God rest upon you. God causing all grace to abound towards you. May you have sufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. Every project you have in front of you, whether it is a building project, whether it's a spiritual growth project, whether it's a ministry expansion project, whether it's a business project, it says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work, that same hand will complete it. I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever project you have, the grace to execute it, let it be given to you now. I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page of the Bible. It's an attack. I decree and declare. Let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God, may it rest upon you. May it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Herein is our Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch. Are we together now? And then it starts to invite the birds. It also invites men to come and partake of the fruit. I don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny. But as we cap up this month's miracle service, especially your spiritual life, some of you, you've not backslidden, but sincerely, you've been at the same level. It's not like you've gone down as it were, but you've just rotated around the same experience. I declare rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. 
rise to a new level thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as God touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone I want to make an altar call I believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention let me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to Jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle I have given my life to Jesus but I need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the holy spirit should already be convicting you do not wait for anyone to come be the first let me for time's sake count one to five one quickly please if you're coming hurry up win that war do not say we came in group and i do not want anybody to know that i'm handing over my life to jesus receiving the life of god is not a funeral service is something that is worth celebrating koinonia are you appreciating them keep coming come to jesus young and old come to him the bible says all who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i don't believe this is all overflow one overflow two join them very quickly and the lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved hallelujah praise the lord make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out god bless you i salute your courage please lift your right hand as i lead you to make this prayer you are not just reciting a poem this is a real um conversation between you and the lord you are receiving his life and you are handing over yours say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus some of you come for altar call when we are saying in jesus name you are not born again you should come the the, the prayer you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life 
I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and I declare their sins forgiven and I declare by the authority of Scripture that beginning from today the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them Holy Spirit I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives make mighty men and women out of them I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent may the Lord bless you in Jesus name I pray amen and amen I salute all of you for making this decision and then for those who also made online thank you for making this decision very quickly I like you to follow the someone waving her hands a lady and all of you in concerts please follow her and, um... hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching